Välkomna till Fonder Direkt. Idag ska jag prata med Tarmo Karotam. Han förvaltar den börshandlade fastighetsfonden Baltic Horizon som, som namnet antyder, fokuserar på den baltiska marknaden. Han investerar i både detaljhandel och fastighetsbyggnader. Och det här är då väldigt spännande för att det är två sektorer som har haft det ganska så kämpigt den senaste tiden. Så jag vill veta lite mer om hur marknaden ser ut, vad han har fått för inputs från de som hyr hans lokaler och vad han tror om framtiden för de här sektorerna. Ja, vi bjuder in Tarmo till intervjun och ser vad han har att säga. Nice to have you here, Tarmo. Thank you. Nice to be here. And for those of our viewers that don't know you and your fund, can you start off by giving us a quick introduction? Sure. So um, uh, we manage one of the largest real estate groups here in the Baltics, and um, we have been investing in commercial real estate uh, since the uh, 2000s. And um, the Baltic Horizon is, is a fund which has invested only in the capital cities, uh, Tallinn, Riga and Vilnius, here in the Baltics, and we are focused on office uh, premises, also some retail and as well as uh, somewhat logistics. Okay, so as you said, you focus on properties in the Baltics. Um, why do you find this particular market to be so interesting? So the Baltic market is is uh, actually, if you look at it, it it's quite sizable. Um, you know, it's it's six and a half million people, and uh, somewhat comparable to uh, any other uh, you know northern European country. Uh, even though yes, we are three countries, but uh, we work very closely together. And I think what makes it interesting here is that we are growing economies and have been growing. And uh, you know, the the strong work um, mentalities here um, have pushed us forward. I think one other uh, thing uh, important to us is is keep a very lean uh, tax structure, and I think we have that uh, across the Baltics. So, um, but at the end of the day, it's it's a growing market, and um, and I think there's a lot of potential here still. Yeah, and a lot of real estate stocks they've suffered quite badly during the COVID pandemic due to a variety of concerns about offices and retail and so on. And that's two segments that your fund invests in, both retail and office spaces. And just if we stop at retail, a sector that's actually been suffering even before the pandemic, how has COVID-19 affected your tenants? Yeah, so um, uh, retail is is an interesting segment. I'd have to uh, specify here that we see retail, you know, divided into three. Uh, one is neighborhood supermarkets. Um, the other is uh, centrally located uh, shopping centers, and the third is destination large scale uh, shopping centers uh, out in the in, in the suburbs. So um, when we look at our portfolio, then uh, the neighborhood supermarkets have done ex actually extremely well because you know people have uh, have been uh, you know living in in um, in the suburbs, and uh, you know also the summer months um, have not made them you know come back to the office uh, that uh, that quickly so um, and uh, whereas you know in centrally located shopping centers we we see as well a strong recovery after the lockdown but uh, what's lacking there still is the, the the amount of tourists and we usually have between you know 10 20 percent of our visitors uh, tourists so uh, that has affected actually uh, our centrally uh, located shopping centers but you know, uh, we, we do have also offices and offices have, have stood very strong. So um, and, and we see the recovery in, in retail um, centers also happening. Um, but once again, you know, the, the neighborhood supermarkets in our portfolio are doing fantastic. OK, interesting. So with all of this in mind, then, what, what do you think about the future for the retail sector? Uh, that's a million dollar question and uh, I think anybody who is um, you know working in retail segment you know uh, has ideas about that um, and we've been discussing this uh, since of course uh, several years uh, when we, we we started to acquire these these um, these retail assets that we have I think um, the you have to you have to look at retail from the point of view of catchment and the clients so 
Uh, if you look at uh, neighborhood supermarkets, uh, which are built uh, in between, you know, some of the uh, apartment houses, um, uh, some uh, a few assets that we own as well. I think you know those will be uh, very very stable still. People uh, have a convenience, you know, to to still go out out outdoor and 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 buy the essential services and and food from the from the neighboring centers. When it comes to uh, larger uh, retail concepts, and um, one really has to understand the the, the catchment area and uh, and what what should be offered there. For example, um, in in Lithuania and Vilnius, we own a centrally located shopping center, Europa, and. Uh, over the past few years, there's been a lot of development, you know, happening around uh, that center as well. Uh, mostly offices, but now also residential. So, what we have been now looking at is how to really best service those people who are there. That means uh, additional uh, food outlets, but also services. So, more and more uh, centers are becoming service centers. But I think ultimately, the future of retail is to make sure that that people who visit the, the center feel comfortable there you know have the um, have an understand the the environment and and feel feel good there just even without going shopping but just to to spend some time which eventually will 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 convert into shoppings but it's a it's an interesting topic and uh, and uh, there's a lot of a uh, lot of stuff that we can discuss here as well <laughs> absolutely and uh, there's also been a lot of discussions with regards to offices during this pandemic and uh, it's been talks about if we're going to keep working in the same way as before the pandemic or not. Are we going to sit in our home offices or are we going to go back to the office? What are your perceptions about this? Have you had any insights from the tenants in your office buildings? Well, maybe just just before office, uh, one comment about you know retail. Uh, you know what we've noticed here in the Baltics is that when um, the pandemic, uh, uh, well, the lockdown ended, then uh, pretty much within a month, uh, all people were, were back in the shopping centers. So the footfalls uh, were there. Yes, and and of course to some extent the tourists are missing. But you know people's behaviors to change that it's it's you know it, it takes it takes a lot longer um, and lo much much more severe uh, you know uh, efforts than one would one would expect. When it comes to offices, um, then um, you know it's it's also something that we are now discussing with our anchor tenants. I mean. You know, we have some of the larger, uh, uh, more prominent tenants in our portfolio, such as, you know, the, the governmental tenants, uh, water supply of Vilnius, heating, but also, you know, state forestry agency, but also G4S and and, uh, and ACB Bank. So, so uh, we're discussing. Currently, I think they are all internally themselves thinking that how much, uh, you know, what sort of office layouts uh, do we need in the future and how much flexibility we will have uh, uh, for for our employees, but I would say that that the flexibility was a trend already before COVID, and and maybe it has now um, uh, become uh, more of a of a topic of discussion. Um, I personally, based on our discussions, don't see that the offices will disappear, and uh, I think there was one uh, very good survey done by uh, Jones Long Lasalle that. Uh, you know, on average, you know, about 20% 20 20 of uh, people have uh, the office sort of equipment uh, or designated office space in their homes. And um, and only 50% have a, an office desk. So the rest, um, you know, are probably working, you know, from kitchen tables and 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 from their, from 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 you know from their laps or or from couches. So it it has become also a bit inconvenient. So there are various things to to consider, but I, I think overall, um, um, I think I like this saying that that uh, one uh, overestimates uh, the crisis in short run but underestimates in the long run so i think in office segment we will see you know changes uh, flexibility is definitely key um, but but we also see some tenants here that um, that are, are moving their departments uh, to estonia and they are still growing mm. and if we talk about these um, contracts that you have with your tenants and and I want to know how solid the contracts are. I'm thinking about what happens with the contracts if if businesses go bankrupt, for example. Yeah, it, it has been a good test, uh, uh, you know, just to see, you know, how the how the tenants have uh, have. Um, 
have acted. And I'm, I'm happy to say that, you know, you know, our partners have been very professional and even understanding that, you know, they, during the lockdown, people were not so much in the offices, you know, the office lease agreements are, are still there, they are long term. And, and uh, I think it's, it's a matter of maybe in future, just a discussion how we go forward here together. So um, our invoices were paid in the office segment without almost a, a hitch. So, uh, um, you know, we were we were quite happy to have a diversified portfolio um, in this crisis. Mm. I know that you also reduced some of your rents during the pandemic to ease the situation for your tenants. How much will this affect your fund? So uh, we've had uh, yes uh, during the uh, lockdown we've you know we've had um, some of our retail centers uh, closed uh, you know for for a couple of weeks um, and uh, during this period um, tenants did ask uh, for some support and we approached it also very much case by case you know uh, some tenants that. Um, you know, we felt that we want to have long-term cooperation with, and and also with the government means. You know, we we negotiated a package so that we 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 have decided as a fund, not you know, to help a tenant uh, to approximate to an extent of 50%, uh, and the rest would have to come back come from the government or or from 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 the own uh, own funding. Uh, so so we did have quite a few requests, yes, and um, during the summer. Summer, that was when we finally were able to conclude them um, into into relief measures. Uh, many cases we also just gave um, a postponement uh, of, of payments. So. Um, when when you look at the impact on the fund side, then um, <clears throat> then uh, we estimate or, or we we see that that approximately at the fund level, uh, approximately 10% of the of the rental income uh, for the entire year uh, is is those uh, relief measures. Okay, and. I've also got a few uh, questions from some of our viewers. So I've got one question here. If uh, you have invested in any new properties as of recently? Uh, we have not invested anything new into anything new this year. But um, since um, there was an announcement in August that uh, we are planning to uh, uh, raise additional capital, so we definitely have plans. Um, and uh, we have plans to diversify um, and look for opportunities now in, in office and logistics segments. And uh, as well, we have our expansion projects, which uh, which I think um, is, 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 is a very good time to, 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 to take forward because the construction segment uh, here in the Baltics is, is quite hungry right now for new projects. Mm. And uh, another question here is how much has your vacancies increased during the pandemic? So uh, the vacancies um, at the end of the uh, June uh, of this year uh, increased to four percent on on a portfolio level. So yes, in in um, in uh, in the centrally located uh, shopping centres, the vacancies um, have increased to anywhere between seven percent and and fifteen percent. So yes, we have seen some vacancies there. But we also see some new interest from tenants. So, um, uh, but but uh, I, I would say that the vacancies have stabilized now in the third quarter. And uh, the last viewer question here: Have you had to write down your property values at all during the pandemic? It, uh, we do semi-annual valuations, and uh, we do one one valuation in December and one valuation in June. And and uh, during the spring, when the lockdown uh, you know took place and there was a lot of uncertainty in the market, we were we 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 were talking to our valuators. Uh, Newsec uh, is our valuator um, this year for the fund. Um, and asking, you know, whether you're ready to make any valuations at all. Uh, and um, in April uh, and um, and early May, they were not sure that they would be able to do any of any 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 valuations that that they could sort of sign off at. But um, but by June, uh, the the things had um, cleared up quite a bit, and uh, we actually decided still to go ahead with our uh, valuations and. Um, uh, 
the valuations uh, reported a drop of approximately 4%. So we had a slightly larger uh, drop in value in, in our retail segment, approximately 5%, five, 5%, 5 and in our office segment, the drop was around 3%. Uh, mainly, actually, the, the drop was related to um, uh, some provisions on, on the vacancies, of course, but, but, but also on the inflation forecasts uh, for the coming uh, 10 years. Uh, they were um, uh, written down to be much lower. So, um, you know, we we uh, we look forward to uh, new valuations by year end. But uh, but yeah, I think uh, um, a drop of 4% uh, is quite representative of the market uh, that we have here in the Baltics. Well, thank you so much, Tamar, for joining us here today. Thank you. It's been a pleasure.